the Pokemon card community is absolutely amazing. Like, you guys are absolutely amazing, and I love everything about the Pokemon card community. It can be a really fun place, right? No matter what area of Pokemon you're interested in, even if it's not Pokemon cards, even if you're somebody who really loves the video game, or Pokemon Go, or Pokemon Unite, and that's why I love the Pokemon World Championship so much, because it was like this unification of everything uh, Pokemon. It was everybody coming together and sharing this love. It doesn't matter where you're from or what you're into. You all love Pokemon. You all have this thing in common. That's what makes it so great. And I firmly believe, and I've talked about this countless times before, that there is a place in this hobby for everybody. Whether you're a Pokemon card collector, or a store owner, or a competitive player, or maybe you have a different area of Pokemon that you really love, like the anime, or uh, the video games, or Pokemon Go, or Pokemon Unite, or, or whatever area of Pokemon you're interested in, you, you belong here. And you get to meet all these wonderful people, whether it be online, or in person, or at your local league. Uh, and it's great. Unfortunately, that's not always the case, right? O occasionally, there is some bad that goes along with the Pokemon card community as well. Like, you have scams, uh, you have manipulation. We've had situations in the past dealing with resealed boxes, uh, weighing packs. Like, a lot of people who can kind of take advantage of the hobby, so that way they get personal gain. And that can be very, very frustrating. And the best thing you can do as a Pokemon card collector, because those frustrations can sometimes force us to exit the hobby or at least uh, give less attention to the hobby and maybe focus on another area of life uh, and it, it can get really really frustrating it can be really sad so it's all about like understanding where these situations are coming from and better protecting yourself to make sure uh, that these situations don't happen to you or somebody else that you might know and care about in the Pokemon card community we've talked about this before uh, we've we've talked about different areas in the hobby where you really want to kind of stay vigilant and you want to make sure that you protect yourself especially if you're a parent right if you're a parent who doesn't necessarily follow Pokemon that closely, but maybe you're buying something for your kids, or you're buying something for uh, the future, or whatever the case may be, uh, it's all about knowledge and education, and that's really what's going to set yourself up. I have given TCG Player a hard time in the past uh, for manipulation issues, and I have to give credit where credit is due, because now they have done something which helps us as Pokemon card collectors better understand when manipulation is happening. And that is something that we're going to talk about in this video. We went through this stretch, and it got super frustrating as a collector. It got super frustrating on my end as a content creator, especially one who dabbles in the market a lot. I got up in the morning, and I was like, I don't really want to record a video today. I don't want to record a video about these Pokemon card trends that are going up and blowing up because it just, it was the same story a different day. And it was clear, it was clear that something weird was going on, but we didn't have the data to back it up on TCG Player because that wasn't something that was released. So I want to give credit where credit was is due uh, to TCG Player right now for kind of putting something, implementing a tool uh, that gives us as Pokemon card fans, Pokemon card collectors, better understanding uh, of when we want to purchase something, whether it be a sealed item or whether it be a card, understanding the trends a whole lot better and kind of spotting weird things that are happening in the market so that way we can make the best decision when it comes to spending our collecting collect dollars because that's what it's all about if you make bad decisions and you start putting stuff in your rare candy app or your collector app and you see things going down and up and way down and you get really frustrated and sometimes you're like okay i need to take a break i need to take a step back because this isn't fun understanding what's going on is really a big it's vital so that way you can make the best decisions when it comes to spending your collecting i'm gonna stop rambling i'm gonna flip you around uh so we can look at this and we're gonna look at uh like 12 13 different slides and i'm gonna go through things relatively quickly because a lot of it uh, you can spot fairly easy but if you look at the bar graph that is on this snip so this snip was taken from TCG player we went through this really weird stretch in April and May where a lot of Pokemon cards were just exploding in price and it wasn't just alternate arts alternate arts were a big deal but it was also illustration rares it was special illustration rares it was sealed product where it was clear that these things something weird was going on because they were just exploding all over the place and it just seemed like a new market price was being established every single day which was almost twice Twice as much as the previous day and a lot of times that sparks FOMO it sparks uncertainty and it just it leads to not a great collecting experience for people in the Pokemon card community so uh, now that TCG player has kind of implemented this bar graph right here so this is just a normal snip of what we normally use looking at the market kind of studying trends analyzing what's going on with each card or with uh, popular different sealed products and things like that 
this shows us actual sales uh, that have actually completed. So we can better understand if something weird is going on. So this is the Ultra Premium Collection right here, the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. If you remember when this came out, it was like uh, a total nightmare, right? Like a couple months before it was released, we got word of it. Uh, we, there was a bunch of content going out there about Panic, FOMO, because the, the Celebrations UPC was short printed. Make sure you pay for this one. It's going to be okay to double pay, to pay twice MSRP. Uh, and then all of a sudden allocation numbers came out and it was there was a boatload of them. Uh, Walmart kept them in stock for weeks while people continued to order them at MSRP. And a month after release, you can find them discounted on shelves at Target, at Amazon, at different places. So this is the Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. It's been out for almost a couple of years now. Uh, and you can see right here, uh, right where this this spurt started happening in uh in the market price so right now you're looking at 151 dollars and 46 cents about 31 dollars above msrp it's actually not that bad when you factor in it's 120 dollars msrp product you factor in 15 dollars ish for shipping it's a little bit above msrp but not a ton above msrp and it is down a little bit from its high point which kind of happened right here uh right around the 20th of may and you can see i put the sales totals right up here and the great thing about tcg player now is that they're giving you information on how many completed sales happened on a weekly basis so if we look at this spurt right here between may 13th and may 19th which is this level right here there were 84 sales which is very similar to what we saw at the end of april uh, but if you look very abnormal when you look at everything through march up until the beginning of april now there was a small small window of time for about two weeks here uh, where you had more normal sales happening where there's only about 30 35 sales but once it got to this point um, these, these sales that drove the market price back up, it went back to normal buying habits. So you can see it's starting to trend downward again. The week after this giant spurt, it went from uh, 84 sales down to 15 sales. Then it went lower even than that the week after, and then kind of leveled off right around 25, 30 sales. So anytime you have a situation where something is taking a week to and all automatically doubling the amount of sales, that's weird. So you can see right here, these few weeks right here, this month stretch uh, is very abnormal behavior for this Charizard Ultra Premium Collection. It's gotten to the point now where we can clearly see there was manipulation that happened with this product. Uh, and it happened with other products as well. So here's the Chilling Rain uh, booster box right here. This is very strange. Like uh, in March... Uh, when we started seeing a lot of booster boxes start exploding in price, they went out of stock on the Pokemon Center website, and then all of a sudden, uh, the market price of a booster box, so Chilling Rain, for example, went from $145 or so, somewhere around MSRP, and shot up overnight uh, to $200 uh, because it just got bought up like crazy. And you can see now, there was clear manipulation happening. Once it sold out on the Pokemon Center website, it was a race to try and get as many booster boxes as you could below $200 because the obvious goal was to spike this product above $200. And now it's come back down to earth, right? It was at one point in time up to about $240. Now it's back to about $200. But you can see March 11th to March 17th, there was 93 sales on this day or on this week. And then all of a sudden the following week, back down to 12. And that is very normal behavior for the Chilling Rain Booster Box. You can see but pretty much every single week with the exception of this one at the beginning of May where there was probably about 20 sales here. Everything is right around 15 sales, uh, maybe 20 sales. So to have one week stretch where it shot up to 93 sales as a buyer, as a Pokemon card collector, obviously something weird that happened there. Same thing with Astral Radiance. So again, this is right around the time where Astral Radiance went out of stock on the Pokemon Center website from March 25th to March 31st. There was 66 sales that happened. And then the following week, it's back down to 17. And even this one at 17, so the beginning of April, the 1st to the 7th, even at 17, that's higher than the majority of the weeks that you see here with the the exception of one that happened right before the manipulation started and one that happened a couple weeks later. For the most part, it's always between 10 and 15 sales on a weekly basis for Astral Radiance booster boxes with the exception of this time. So if you're somebody who's going out looking to buy and looking to add stuff to your collection, when you see stuff like this happen, you really should pause, wait a second for the price to correct because clearly there is something that happened that shot this product way up. Now it has it has trickled back down a little bit. You can see at one point in time it was closing in on that 190 
$90 price point. Now it's back to about $170, uh, but crazy to see how much sold in a one week stretch. Here's the Evolving Sky Sleeve Booster Pack. Uh, this one is insane to look at as well. So this is only three days worth of data that TCG Player is breaking it down for. And you can see this giant spike in market price right here where it went from basically $15 or $17 per sleeve booster pack up to about $25. Now it's come back down to about $22 currently. Uh, but you have this stretch between July 20th and July 22nd where there's 185 sales. And then the following week after that, it's back down to 25 sales. And 25 sales is actually a little bit above average if you look at all the other uh, areas of the bar graph right here. Usually it's around 10 sales a day, maybe even less than that. Uh, so to see one, one three-day stretch of time where it jumps up to 185 sales, pretty insane. This happened with a lot of singles as well. Um, a lot of singles that did end up correcting themselves, like the Santa kind of V alternate art, for example. And you're not looking at huge growth by any means. This one jumped up to about $8. Uh, but you can see abnormal behavior that clearly happened at the end of April, beginning of May, April 15th to the 21st. There was 164 sales for this card. And then all of a sudden, the week after, April 22nd to April 28th, it dropped back down to 57 sales, which again is a little bit above normal uh, if you look at the other days and other three-day stretchers or week stretches uh, of this bar graph right here. So uh, almost three times the amount of sales as what we normally see uh, for a week stretch for this Santa Conda V. Same thing with the Celebi V. You have this little stretch right here and this little stretch right here. Well, April 1st, to April 7th, you have 95 sales right there, which is about double the amount of sales that you normally have for a sell BV. Uh, 48 sales is typically what normally happens, and you can see even that is higher than a lot of other days in this uh, bar graph right here. So about double the amount of sales in one day, obviously driving the price up uh, to the point where it almost hit $45, uh, and now it's come back down to earth quite a bit, $28.78. So it's still above, above where it was before that manipulation happened. It's still about 14 and a half, 15% above where it was, but it's definitely cooling off uh, quite a bit. So that's why it's important to kind of spot these abnormal days because you don't want to buy right here when all the FOMO is kind of instilling in people's brain and things like that. It's just not a good time. Here's the Steelix Illustration Rare from Paradox Rift. This one had one stretch in time, uh, May 20th to the 26th, where you, you had 70 sales in one day, which is clearly abnormal. The following week, or sorry, uh, 70 sales in one week, which is abnormal. The following week, it's back down to 31 sales right here, which is very normal behavior. You can see it's right around 30 to 35 sales pretty much every single week with the exception of May 20th to May 26th where all of a sudden you had over double that in the amount of sales at 70 sales which is crazy. Here's the Neuvern V alternate art from Evolving Skies. There was some alternate arts that started clearing off and I think a lot of people were like okay well I don't want this to happen to the cheaper alternate arts like Santa Conda and like Neuvern. Let's buy up all these copies before it's too late uh, and all of a sudden you had like the Neuvern V which inflated to a price that it, it shouldn't have been at right and that's why it's corrected itself a little bit back down to $36 but at one point in time it was around $46 but you can see this stretch right here from May 27th uh, to June 2nd 29 sales the week prior to that was also 29 sales and then you're back down to about 13 sales the week after that so 10 to 15 sales very normal for this product on a weekly basis 30 sales very abnormal so when you're over doubling the sales volume that normally happens then something weird is going on the Garchomp EX Special Illustration Rare also from Paradox Rift saw some weird behavior May 6th to May 12th 161 sales and then the following week after that closer to 100 sales and then the normal behavior started on May 20th to May 26th uh, right around 31 sales so that's very familiar with what we saw in March with what we saw in April closer to that 40 to 50 sale range and then all of a sudden May 6th to the 12th there's 161 sales like that's weird and that's why you saw this giant curve uh, this giant uh, this giant skyrocket, if you if you want to call it that, of uh, of sale of pricing because it jumped all the way up to almost twenty eight dollars, uh, and now it's come all the way back down to where almost it was prior to the manipulation, back down to seventeen dollars and eighty seven cents. This happened with Morty's conviction. Uh, you have instances right here. You had another attempt right here, May sixth to the twelfth, where it jumped up to one hundred and thirty two sales, and then the week after fifty two sales, which was very normal. Uh, but you can see a little bit of manipulation happening right here, uh, and then it jumped up to about eighty. $90. Now it's all the way back down to $33. Like this is uh, this just way, way lower than what it was. But you can see uh, getting bought out right here. Now it didn't, the market price didn't swing up because there was enough supply to meet that demand or to meet that attempt. Uh, and because of that, it just continued to fall uh, all the way back down to $33. But very abnormal activity for that one. Same thing with the Conkledor V that we 
saw with the Santa Canavi, uh, very weird activity here from April 8th to the 14th. There was 87 sales. The following week, it went back down to 30, uh, which was very normal behavior. You can see a little bit of a blip right here where it jumped up to about 50, but even that's a little bit abnormal uh, compared to this 87 sales that happened all of a sudden April 8th to the 14th. And because of that, it's been relatively flat now, right around this $3.30 mark, which is where it's sitting right now. But you can see just a lot of people buying or a lot of products selling. It could just be a couple people who are buying that are kind of doing this manipulation. Crazy to see. Same thing happened with a lot of products from Crown Zenith. A lot of singles from Crown Zenith. You can see this one, very abnormal activity right here. May 6th to the 12th, there was 84 sales that happened. The following week after that, it was back down to 20 sales. So 20 is fairly close to the average for this product. Anywhere between 20 and 30 sales. You can see that throughout March, throughout the majority of April, and all the way from May up until current day. So very weird to see this week stretch of 84 sales. And because of that, the market price jumped from about $60 all the way up to about $100. And now it's come back down to earth at about $64. This doesn't always happen only with manipulation uh, of new cards. Like sometimes, uh, here's Counter Catcher. This is from Crimson Invasion, first of all. Uh, there's other instances where it does happen. Uh, and this is one instance where Counter Catcher ended up spiking like crazy because of this abnormal amount of sales back in October of 2023 because there was a, uh, a gold, a secret rare Counter Catcher that was coming in a future set that just got announced. So we had figured out, I forget which set it was, if it was uh, Paradox Rift or if it was... Um, Temporal Forces, one of those sets, uh, we had an announcement that Counter Catcher was in the Japanese set. So we knew it was coming to the English set. And as soon as that announcement happened, this giant buyout happened of the Counter Catcher Secret Rare from Crimson Invasion because people knew, well, this is going to be big in the competitive world. Counter Catcher is a big card. They're reprinting it. People are going to want to play Max Rarity in their decks. Uh, so it went from basically a $2, $3, $4 card all the way up to about $20, $25 overnight. And you see this amount of sales here. Uh, September 25th to October 1st, 59 sales, where the average <laughs> the average is only four. Uh, so the following week after that, October 2nd to the Oct October 8th, there was four sales. Then you have a little bit more as the market price had already been increased. Uh, but usually it's, you know, five to 10 sales on a weekly basis for this specific card. But because of that announcement uh, and people who pay attention to the competitive world, they took advantage. They took advantage, they manipulated the price, and it jumped up like crazy uh, to this $25 price point. Now it's come back down a little bit, but still at $18 compared to the fact that it was only at 4 or $5. Uh, in September of 2023. You also have different instances where it's normal and organic to see these buyouts happen. So Iron Thorns EX, we covered this a little bit after the World Championships. Iron Thorns EX ended up winning the Masters Division uh, as the Pokemon card World Champion. So Iron Thorns, uh, a card that a lot of people wanted to start buying up so they could play it. They could play it at a competitive league. They knew that this card was good. They know that this deck is good because it just won the World Championship. So you can see this giant increase in quantity of sales uh, because there were so many people who wanted to go out and buy these. Now, there probably could have been some manipulation situations that happened in this instance where maybe somebody's like, well, everybody's going to want to play Iron Thorns, so I'm going to buy this large large amount of them, but you all, I guarantee you also had a lot more of a giant pot of people who bought Iron Thorns EX because of its performance at the World Championships. And because of that, you had 740 sales in a two-day stretch between August 13th and August 15th. And then it came back down a little bit the following few days, October or August 16th to the 18th, it was down to 338 sales. And then it's pretty close to about 200 sales, which is about normal for this. But as people play uh, play Pokemon and they get it, they get used to Baltimore, which is the next regional championship, they want to go to league, they want to win a league cup, a league challenge. Uh, they started buying up this Iron Thorns EX and it made sense uh, to have this much of a quantity sell at once, which did impact the price quite a bit. Now the price has fallen back down uh, because there were so many more eyeballs on it. So that's more natural growth that we're looking at there. Same thing with Earth and Vessel. Uh, you can see natural growth happening with Earth and Vessel where it's very normal for a large quantity of products to be selling on a daily basis on every couple of days. You can see for the most part, Earth and Vessel selling between 1,000 and 1,500 copies almost every day. And this is a situation where they just can't, uh, they, they don't have enough of supply to meet demand, which is why it continues to rise up to $4.50. You can see in March of 2024, it was only about a dollar. Uh, but because even though there's a 1,000 selling every single day, it's still not enough uh, to meet up with demand. Uh, uh, so you can see the, the graph increasing for the market and the quantity still staying the same, which means, hey, we're willing to pay $4.50 for a copy of Earth and Vessel simply because we need four of them in our deck and there's no other cheaper option to get them.
them. So I'm sure it's not like the happiest portion of somebody's day to have to spend $20 on a place out of earth and vessels, uh, especially when everything else in the competitive world is so much cheaper. Uh, but this is more of a normal performance on TCG Player. So I just wanted to go over some instances where we can clearly see now and give credit to TCG Player for kind of providing us with this opportunity, with this tool, uh, so that way you can make the best decisions when it comes to spending your collection dollars. If you see something weird that happened, make sure that you don't pull the trigger and buy that card until it gets back to a point where you're like, okay, now I'm comfortable. And that's why I'm a big advocate of writing down a price that you're comfortable paying for a card. And if you miss out on it, then don't worry about it. Just move on to the next card and you can come back to that one at a later date. Utilize your earthen vessels, utilize your cards uh, that that uh, are more important for other people and maybe not more important for you at that time. Like if you have earthen vessels, you can trade those off to add different spots where you might have holes in your collection. And then you can back, come back and get earthen vessel when it's a quarter card a year or two years down the road Uh, and that's really kind of the best way that you can make your collection work for you so i wanted to make sure to show this information i'm sure you guys already understand a lot of this uh you don't need me explaining it to you uh but very clear that there's a lot of weird stuff that did happen and now tcg player making a little bit more difficult because now that this uh information is accessible to everybody uh it kind of helps protect a lot of people who are buying more so i hope you enjoy the content if you did please hit that subscribe button down below leave a like leave a comment it goes a really long way for the algorithm but ultimately Thank you so much for taking the time to watch and listen. Love you guys. We'll be back uh, tonight. We're coming, we're doing a live stream tonight. We'll be back tonight with a live stream and Tuesday with another video. Until next time, guys. Peace.